Hey guys, uh, welcome to the Dead Horse Podcast. I'm Vivek, and uh, with me this week is Arvind. Hello. Yeah, Tejas is out this week. Uh, too much work, fatigue. So uh, yeah, we thought we talk this week about the games we've been playing, and you know, just have a more relaxed, toned down podcast. Probably a shorter podcast as well. So uh, Arvind, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I've been playing FPL Advanced Edition. The so, expansion. Yeah, the expansion. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. How is it? What have they added? Uh, they've added a new race, which has some interesting mechanics in that the room they stay in, like the oxygen of that room is is drained. So they are sort of, and they are not hurt by the lack of oxygen. So this race has an interesting uh, sort of. The other races can't really be next to them, so so it adds a whole new, uh, like. You need to manage where they are in your ship, or the, or if you use them as invaders. Huh. Using them as invaders is actually great because if you manage to get two or three, like I had in one of my runs, hmm. then they kill people surprisingly quickly. You get three of them, the oxygen in the room is almost immediately drained, and then it's much easier to like kill the the rest of the like the ship crew and stuff. And there's also a hacking system which I think is sort of uh, like I didn't really find it useful because the problem is that uh, the duration of the hacking I think is not yet yeah, the hacking system isn't that great, but it can be useful I guess. So how does the hacking system work? Uh, you basically use one drone part to to launch and attach itself to one system. You can only hack one system in one battle, and okay. and once you press the hack button, what it does is it. Sort of disables the system for a little bit uh-huh. and locks the doors around the room. So yeah, uh, I mean yeah, like I don't think it's that easy because for, for the most part, I mean yeah, I think if you actually level up this, like uh, the the final boss ship has that has a really overpowered hacking system for the first game, and that like if. It's a completely random thing. Half the time they just hack your doors or something, and it will be useless. And the other time they call hack your weapons, and then your weapons can basically never charge fully because they keep on hacking and disabling the weapons. So yeah, it depends, I guess. Okay. Sounds and like yeah. A bunch of uh, I think there's a there's a really yeah the the final one is probably the most interesting one in that it's a clone day. So the clone bay replaces your med bay if you want to, and in some sense. And if your characters die, they respawn in that clone bay. So uh-huh. it creates a very interesting dyna- dynamic because since you don't have your med bay, you're not healed per run. And the clone bay heals like 10 15 HP by default, 25 max if you level it up. And, and there's a XP penalty. Uh, so the clone bay can basically be used to sort of keep on boarding the other, uh, keep on boarding the other ship. But at the same time, uh, if somebody destroys the clone bay, then that means that the your characters who are dead at, at 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 that point will stay dead. So it in effect uh, like it sort of paints a big like target on your clone system, as in like attack this. Okay. Yeah, so so that's the most uh, interesting uh, system that in terms of the possibilities. Yeah, it's interesting. But I like. I mean, it's it's a. Uh, I like that it's a choice. You don't have to compulsorily have a clone bay. It's something you can. No, no. Update. Like some ships, like start off with a clone bay, and then it's completely random. So it's not okay. really a choice. It's, like, it a, it's it's not something you can upgrade to. Is what you're saying? No, you can't upgrade to you. Uh, you can if and. Both the medway and clone bay cannot stay in the same place at once. So if you so if you go to a store and you want to buy a medway, hmm. then that means that uh, your that ship will not have a clone bay. Yeah, it will replace your clone bay. Okay. And vice versa. So you can only it's have one. You can't have both. It's interesting because the both 
choices will appeal to two very different kinds of players the player i think who values their crew and who like you know likes to forge relationships with the characters will go for a med bay because then it feels more impactful if a character dies i don't think it's that much because like to be honest i never felt any attachment to any of my characters in that game because like i think it's a, it's a rogue like also at the end of the yeah, day it's a rogue like so yeah you can't really get attached to it any of it and i think like the the clone bay has a disadvantage in that if if you don't want to play a boarding strategy then the clone bay sort of useless because the because in between the in between jumps you will only gain like 10 to 15 hp so it will take like 5 6 jumps to fully heal a character and so if in the middle you get boarded then if your character is at half health then you are at a disadvantage and another thing is that skills are pretty important in the late game like if your pilot will who has maxed out his evasion skill dies even if the person is clone back with this skill penalty they won't be as useful as that person so i actually still prefer the old medway and i think like the clone bay is only useful if you want to go for an all out you know insane type strategy where you just like board a ship as soon as you uh... Yeah, yeah, keep on boarding a ship, basically. Just keep throwing <laughs> numbers at the. And even that, then, I think that what happens, what ends up happening is that you basically say, okay, these three, four crew members are the disposable ones, so I won't level up any of their skills. And these other three crew members, like one, one, one who's a pilot, one who's shield, and the third who's either weapons or engine, these three are my permanent crew members. So you better hope that your permanent crew members don't die, or if somebody doesn't disable your clone system, because as soon as somebody disables your clone system, your characters will die basically immediately. The characters that are dead. Hmm. So and and you need a special upgrade in which like the memories of like the DNA of the character is stored, and that's rare. Like it's random. Like I have only seen it in like two of my playthroughs out of like twenty twenty five of them. So yeah, I think yeah, the clone bay is a pretty high risk strategy and doesn't really appeal to me. It's interesting. Like, uh, other than this, what else have they added? Has the final boss fight become harder? <laughs> yeah, the final boss fight like it's still a pretty much a cheap shot. Like because the ship basically doesn't operate by the same rules as other ships. Like I'm pretty certain that like the my complaint with the original FPM ship. and that it has a reactor which is impossible for you to build further because like every system has maximum power and you have weapons that nobody else has like three missiles three of the pop things so yeah that is that that still remains and they've added a hacking thing and basically if if the if that hacking uh, drone attaches itself to your shield system or your weapon system You might as well as just stick with the game, in my opinion. No point in like putting up a fight. But I'm pretty sure like there will be somebody who's like, "Ha, this is this guy doesn't know what he's talking about." I beat <laughs> this like you know this boss on a one one power reactor or something. So I'm sure people will still manage to beat it. But yeah, like yeah, the final boss fight is still a bit of a cheap shot, and the core game hasn't really changed. Like the systems ha- have sort of. A- Added to it, but not really completely overhauled it. So, like it's a smaller expansion than, like for example, Enemy Within. And personally, I don't mind at all because, like, it's it's a free update. So, yeah. Any- yeah, it is a free expansion, and yeah. uh, I mean, FTL is one of the best uh, roguelike strategy games that I've played. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, what I actually what this makes me sort of regret is that I would like a game that's like FPL but isn't a roguelike. So you kind of have like more strategies involved and stuff like that, you know? Because like FPL is still fairly random, and sometimes I don't really want a random. You want a more finite, uh, structured experience. Yeah, and I want an experience where I can be like, okay, yeah, that's what I did, and that's why I failed. So I you want to put some, you want to put some XCOM into uh, yeah. into your uh, FTL? Yeah. So yeah, if somebody wants to make this game, then like I've just given you a recipe for like infinite money. So yeah. 
If somebody you say that like now, if the game comes out and doesn't make infinite money, can this person present you with an invoice? For yeah, me? sure, yeah. <laughs> I'll just declare bankruptcy. I'm sure the courts will sort the infinite thing out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, seriously, like I would like, like FTL's core system is is very like it, it just makes sense. It's very elegant. Like there's a shift. You have power. You have to assign power to certain other systems. So I love that part, but yeah, personally, I don't love the roguelike part. And I mean, like I can see the appeal, you know? like, and I and I love, the, and it's not like I totally hate the roguelike part either. It's just like I want that experience, but in a more structured way where, uh, you know, there's plot and all that stuff, and I can see, okay, this is why I lost a battle. I'm going to go back to try something else. So yeah. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm more of XCOM. <laughs> more of F- XCOM and FTL. Uh, yeah. Like I don't know if you've checked this out, uh, and actually, it, it's probably not what you want because uh, it's a, it's not the 180 degrees of what you want, but it is a different kind of uh, experience. Uh, but uh, recently, the guy who made Gunpoint. Uh, has put out a few gameplay videos of this new game called Heat Signature. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I which saw is that. completely again, it's a randomly generated game in which you have randomly random uh, quests assigned to you. Yeah. But yeah, you float around in a ship and invade other people's ships. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like. It's not exactly what you want, but if someone created a scripted campaign in that uh, in that game, I think it'd be pretty close to what you wanted. Yeah, but I want like yeah, that's the. Kind of thing. I'm not sure if like somebody's gonna create a script campaign in that because yeah, we'll see. Hmm. Like I mean, so, there, there's so, more XCOM. Yeah, there's always going to be more XCOM. Uh, <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, right now, apparently, like PC gamer on Twitter have just teased like the first tweet is that FPL Advanced Edition is the definitive version of a brilliant strategy game, and then the next tweet is. Hmm, wonder what Pyrax's big announcement could be. See last tweet. So apparently, yeah, like the like how Pyraxes usually work through expansions to a game. So maybe the second XCOM expansion is about to be announced. Oh wow. Second expansion? That's gonna be insane. Yeah, but like it was <laughs> like, at least I expected it. So but yeah, like still any more XCOM is pretty Awesome. Oh yeah, uh, how much like uh, all the XCOM that I can get? I and yeah, one thing that... yeah, which sort of reminds me is that like uh, like there was a big thing about Chris Avalon writing the FPL stuff, but ultimately FPL stuff is just so it's like right. It was like four or five lines. So yeah, like I couldn't even tell you what lines Chris Avalon wrote or like what lines anyone wrote. So, uh, Chris Avalon stuff I find stands out more in an RPG kind of setting where you're playing as a character and you know you're yeah. you're going through a world. FTL creates like I mean there's no feeling that you're in a in a world when you're playing FTL. Like it, it, the the ship to ship battles are really exciting, but yeah. if you're playing yeah. that game and you're enjoying it, you're enjoying it for the strategy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, it's it's one of those games where uh, especially in the final two sectors. You can just sort of uh, sometimes just encounter something that just completely throws your strategy out of the water, and you're like, I couldn't have, I couldn't have done anything to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I mean, like, yeah, there's just... a game in which your your decisions definitely have consequences, and and you find out what those consequences are very very quickly. Yeah, I mean, and, and you can't really prepare. Like, you can prepare a little bit. But at the same time, you can't really prepare for anything. And like sometimes a ship that, like a ship appears that that literally feels like it's been built to your precise weaknesses. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing a couple of Tim Schafer games recently. I finally got around to playing Broken Age, and uh, I also started. For I I don't know how that many is, times. Yeah, that that's interesting. That that's interesting because you uh, started playing Broken Age with Bella, I think. That, yeah. That's her name, right? And yeah. I, you started. See. And I started it with 
the Hobbit guy. No, not the Hobbit guy. Shay. The, yeah, Shay. Yeah. Yeah, I always forget. I, I only remember him because Elijah Wood voiced him. So, yeah. I really like uh, Vela's story. Uh, yeah, Vela's story. Like, yeah, like, it, to me, it feels like, uh, like, you know, like the, the whole dual world concept, like, as a developer, I don't like it at all because I sort of tried to do it a few times. And like double time obviously have more resources than me. But at the same time, I feel like anytime you do a dual thing, what you're basically doing is making two games that are sort of good instead of one game that's really, really good. I mean, I'm not sure, but yeah. Uh, I don't know just yet. Like I think from what I, 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 I've seen of uh, Broken Age, it seems like it's half a game and you're going to have to play the remaining half to see if... Uh, they've fully been able to realize the story that they've started to tell. Yeah. Uh, uh, that being said, like, I, I enjoy, like, I, I finished Vela's story in, uh, and I really enjoyed it. it. It's, it's well told. It's a, it, like, it's a pretty standard hero's journey kind of, you know, there is this quest and she goes on it and achieves it and it's told with a very typical adventure game puzzle thing and some of the puzzles I found to be really obtuse. Uh, but, yeah, I like it. There's, there's there's a lot of random stuff going on in Broken Age, wherein like you know you need to uh, you need to pick up a um, you need to pick up a, a like a, a curio on the wall of someone's house and then use it later later on to solve a puzzle. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess that's just like the adventure game stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I just like for me, I think I made a mistake in that. It's not really a mistake, I guess, just a sort of shortcoming of the game in that I started with Shea first. And so I played a bit of about an hour of shape. And like as soon as I played like 10 minutes of Ella's story, I knew what the twist was gonna be. And I think this is a, a thing that many reviews also touched upon. But like I literally like clicked on this the day it launched. So I had not read any reviews or anything. But yeah, like one thing which I do want to say is that it looks absolutely beautiful. Like oh it looks like, looks gorgeous. Yeah, I, mean, I did want to. I did want to ask you when you said you were going to do. You were thinking of doing the dual world thing. Are you saying there were going to be aliens in unrest at one point in time? <laughs> yeah, like that's just the thing. Like no, you were. Like, it was actually. It was actually a thing in my last game, which I, like, which I then removed because it was just not feasible. Okay. I thought it like it was going to be something like cowboys and aliens. You were going to do Indians and aliens. <laughs> nah. I think yeah, like the problem. Yeah, man. Like, I think it would. It might have actually been better if we had just sort of like <laughs> done Bella's story all the way through in this game, and then maybe like Shay's story starts after that in this episode two or something. I mean, at that point, they wouldn't even need to make episode two. We just have Bella's story, and and then twenty five bucks for a new game, so they would have ended up making twice the money. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yeah, I like. Yeah, I'm not sure about the dual world thing because, yeah, that's the that's the thing because even now, like in some cases, this uh, broken age is a is a bit more restricted than uh, old adventure games. Like, like one thing which I could not get over was the lack of a look at button, like because that's just like that basically robs the environment of and the characters the chance to sort of say funny lines, express their character, and stuff like that. And I mean, I get why that is, because you have to make games for iPad now, or like, you won't make money or something. So Yeah, I like, I, I found, I found Vela very likable as a character. Yeah, Vela, uh, Vela's pretty cool, yeah. The weird thing is, no one else other than her is likable, at least in, like, at least in, in the entire section of Vela's story that I played through. I didn't find a single other character that I thought was like no. There's one, the McGee girl, uh, like uh, the the young thirteen year old girl who's sweeping, and uh, her mother are kind of likable, but uh, I like, yeah. Uh, I like the shoe knitting mother. Yeah, 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 the shoe knitting mother and her daughter. They're both uh, likable characters. Her son, like, did she have, was that daughter? Her, oh, her name's Maggie, right? And they take the A out, so it becomes McGee. Hmm. No, I think that was okay. okay yeah, maybe it's, it's a daughter. The son is with the father. Son is with the father, and they're both yeah. kind of creepy. Oh yeah. So where is the daughter then? Like, where is she? She's the one who gives you the ladder. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I did not know those people were rich. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Okay, now I remember. Oh yeah. 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 I yeah I, I did not find that daughter is like like memorable. I guess not really. Yeah. Because well, clearly, you don't, like, you, don't, you don't you don't you don't remember the character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like Shay Shay is pretty bland. Like he like and its plot is made to make him bland. Like he's blandy, like blandersome. Like so I'm not sure if like okay they succeeded in making their character very bland, but is it good? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, like I, I don't know, the Bella is the most interesting character in her campaign, and that's fine. She is the main character. You want her to stand out. Uh, that's understandable. Like there's just a lack of likable characters. Like right, like Will Wheaton's character is not likable. Uh, the tree that you talk to is just weird. All the girls are. Yeah, the Will Wheaton character seems kind of strange. Like like it. I mean, I don't know. Like I guess yeah, like that character fits the bill of you know like. Quirky characters you meet in adventure games, but yeah. like, I actually think that that one part is sort of like the voice acting is lets the character down because the voice acting is just well written, and I'm and I'm and I'm hearing the voice and because I've heard that voice so many times now, like I just cannot relate to like because well written like for some reason he didn't change his voice at all. I guess he was given as an instruction to just be well written. I guess. Yeah, okay. I, like it's slightly hipster version of Will Wheaton, I guess. Like uh, the the other thing that I, that I missed about this game is that there's a lack of uh, the general thing in Tim Schafer games. I find is that the conversations there are there's a lot more back and forth usually. In yeah, there. this the, yeah, the conversations here felt very light. Like they felt yeah. like exactly the the conversations that were needed to uh, like move the game forward. Yeah, the, it it felt functional as opposed to like there's very little information. Uh, no, not even information. The very little world building through the conversation, and I uh, that's the difference I feel between a game like Full Throttle and this. You know. Yeah. Now, actually, think that that's one of the things that was lost along with the look at thing because usually what happens is when you look at something, the protagonist quips something, and sometimes some other character also replies on top. Like for example, if you look, let's say you look at an NPC, and the the, the protagonist is like. That guy looks like a cross between a badger and a whale, mm-hmm. and then the NPC is like, "I heard that." So then it creates this sort of like humorous uh, thing, you know, where, which is sort of lacking because there is nothing to replace it in this game. Yeah, I agree. Like it, it felt weird because I've also been playing Psychonauts, and. Uh, That game doesn't have a very deep conversation system, at least in the amount. Like, I mean, I don't remember, and I'm playing it after a long time. Yes, from this, I cannot have a conversation system. I don't think so. I don't think so. But they do a lot of world building by allowing you to move around the world and talk to characters periodically yeah. in the camp. Yeah. And like those conversations keep resetting, and you can keep having new conversations with the same characters, right? Yeah. And that's what uh, like it uh, allows character development to happen. It also allows world building to happen. uh and like i don't know i think broken age needed something like that uh it needed better conversations than what they have they have very functional conversations and they have a lot of funny lines like jack black was kind of funny as the the cult leading weirdo uh harmony uh, yeah 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 i mean that thing overall uh like this game feels weird because it's clearly very Like the art is up, it looks amazing. It it it's nice to control in that like adventure games are usually nice to control. And but but like the, it feels like it has only half the soul of an adventure game. And I mean, I can I sort of I'm comparing it to the only other adventure game series that I played recently, that the Blackwell games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just find the Blackwell games to have much more personality and like the character interplay and just like you have lots of moments where characters are funny, characters sort of like talk to each other. There's there's memorable lines and stuff. So yeah, like on one hand, like it's it's great. Like it's it's sort of a herald of things to come. This was like. Basically, the game that ignited all the Kickstarter thing. 
Yeah, and it's also ignited uh, like a lot of people are are going back to making adventure games again. Like I saw an interview yeah. with Jane, Jane Jensen, you know, the creator of Gabriel Gabriel Knight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she's making a new Gabriel. She's making Mobius, which is a again yeah. a point adventure game. And after, if that does well, they'll be making a new Gabriel Knight game, and that's great, right? I mean, yeah. we're we're seeing uh like. I'm surprised. Not, Activision just gave them the rights to uh, Gabriel Knight. Gabriel Knight? Yeah, yeah, that's insane, huh? Like that. Yeah. That I is mean, actually. They, they could have rebooted insane. it into a gritty first-person shooter. No, I don't think so. See, like, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Activision's philosophy is pretty clear in that sense that if they cannot make, like, if they cannot make this a tentpole annual franchise that makes billions of dollars for them, they're not going to invest in it. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, you know they, this. Yeah, that I know that. Yeah, <laughs> but no, th- th- this was their logic for uh, uh, like for cancelling a lot of games back in the day. You know, it, it, like yeah, their so logic they, was. It, yeah. it it's not it's not going to be something we can annualize and make a billion dollars off. It's not something we want to do because if you have to spend the middle range money you have to spend twenty thirty million dollars, that's not worth it for us. We don't want to be in that business. They want to be in the business of making big hits, yeah. uh, which is fine. I mean, if that is their strategy, that's fine. It's a it's a risky strategy. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of yeah, it's sort of only like it's it's a, it's like a slot machine thing where you like yeah you, one coin costs. A billion dollars, and <laughs> if you hit the jackpot, then good. But, uh, but if they have been ma- able to do it pretty consistently, I mean, they they tried with Skylanders, that was hugely successful. I mean, it is so successful that Disney decided to copy them and make Disney Infinity. You know? Yeah. Uh, this like, is really because I have absolutely heard nothing of, of Skylanders, except the fact that it is like except the fact that it is making tons of money. Like I couldn't even tell you what genre of game it is. It is a kind of isometric action game, not exactly isometric, top-down action game, character action game. And uh, you you know you know the basic gimmick of uh, of uh, Skylanders, right? You buy the toy, and then when you buy the toy, you keep it on the the uh, RF RF scanner that you get with the game, and then you that the character you bought with the toy it shows up in the game. Oh my God, that's just the most cynical thing. Okay. So like basically, it's, it's a collectible yeah. thing. You have to pay twenty bucks for each character. I mean, if this type of game would have been possible in the eighties, Transformers would have been this game. <laughs> uh, well, Transformers was this toy for sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was built. Game. Yeah, because it that that was a cartoon built to sell toys, right? Yeah. I mean, at that time, you didn't have the technology and stuff, but yeah. This, this is a complete transmedia thing, right? It's selling a toy. Yeah. It's selling a game. Uh, yeah. If there was a TV show, they'd sell a TV show also. Uh, yeah. Nowadays, just like this, like kids don't really watch TV the same way kids twenty years old ago watch <laughs> TV. So, like it's 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 logical. This stuff has sort of moved on to the internet and video games. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm interested to see that in this new generation, what are what are Activision's big bets? We already know that they bet big on Destiny being successful. But yeah. we've not seen any of the other stuff that they're doing. Uh, like, I want to see if they if they they uh, see that there's like, like because it'll be yeah. indicative of Does where they think even, the market is going. Yeah, I mean, does anyone even know what Destiny is going to be like? I mean, the only thing I've seen is concept art and that they set it off. That's like you know the the thing I is. Mean, I mean, they frankly, it sort of happened was that uh, like they they did they started a whole like series of reveals of Destiny kind of thing. The yeah. first step was concept art. Then EA announced Titanfall, and everyone was like, "Whoa, Titanfall!" So Activision was literally like, they picked up their Destiny toys and they just no, not showing them to you anymore. So yeah, that was weird. Like, I think I definitely think there's some element of like competition involved there, and that like they oh, said, "Oh, for sure, oh, absolutely." That Titanfall I... had like Titanfall had basically sort of uh, what do you say, stolen their lunch or something like that. <laughs> See, I think what's going to end up happening eventually is that uh, the the Destiny uh, Destiny is probably going to end up being a more interesting game because they're actually doing something different from the standard first-person shooter, which is what Titanfall is a multiplayer shooter. They're not doing anything new with that formula. I thought Destiny, Destiny is also big on the whole uh, shared shared world. Thing yeah, like Destiny is trying to, to do something like Daisy, but on a much larger scale. So hmm. funnily enough, didn't Square Enix announce a game today that was also like Daisy but bigger? Oh no, not Square Enix. Sony Entertainment Online, or Sony Online Entertainment. EverQuest. 
No, 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 not that. It's called H one Z one or something. What? Uh, yeah. Okay, I have to check this out. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let me just uh, take take a game. Uh, yeah. So the post says, "Hi, I'm from Sony, and I'm Jace Medley or something, and I want to tell you about this exciting new free-to-play game we have had under wraps at Sony Online Entertainment for a while. It's called H1Z1. It's a massive, massively multiplayer game that's basically like Daisy. So I just huh. summarized five paragraphs to you. Huh. So yeah, like so it's, a zomb- it's a zombie shooter." Yeah, no, yeah, and the whole premise is that you know, like what Daisy does, is that zombies are only half the monsters; the other half are just humans and stuff like that. Okay, whatever, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I like. I mean, if it's a, if it's a good game, it's, it's probably going to be worth uh, checking out at least. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, this was a Reddit post, so immediately, like, people were like. They were like the the people were divided into two categories. The first two just were just like yes, Daisy is dead now. Bye bye Daisy. I want the refund. And the other half is like you guys suck. So yeah, not <laughs> sure. So, I, I mean, mean Daisy has, has its existing. Yeah. Daisy has its existing built-in audience, which isn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So, but we'll I guess see what now, happens. like they have so sort of like I I, I don't know I. Heard that they have sort of started free to play Eyes Daisy apparently, yeah. and and like Dean Hall is left, so I guess like the the whole charm of like you know this is the guy who first thought up of this idea. Yeah, he's going to start his own company in New Zealand, right, Dean Hall? Yeah. yeah, I think that's like the whole idea of that company in New Zealand is that he's going to buy a big island, of like out of the Daisy money, and then he's just going to let. Like game designers throw in like ten game designers, leave them to fend for themselves in that island. And then <laughs> he comes out with the game, makes the bet. Like is the game that the companies are to publish. I see <laughs> what you did there. I see <laughs> what you. Did. Yeah. Uh, well, whatever. I was going to say he should put in really dumb people on the island with them. Um, no, I think that that part will be fulfilled by the internet once the once okay. the live stream is started. That works. Yes, there will be a lot of <laughs> dumb people on the internet commenting on what's happening. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, at this point, not really anything that's sort of going on in the games industry, I guess. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's not. Yeah. There's yeah, not guess, anything super interesting. I mean, there was some stuff on Twitter yesterday and day before yesterday, but that's just. Stuff that happens um, every I, day. Yeah, personally, I've also been sort of disconnected because of like first rest and then like the stuff yeah. I'm working on. So. Yeah, what's what's going on with uh, unrest, man? Yeah, right now uh, we are basically in the final stages. Just like lots of uh, like bug fixing, polishing, and like the final, the final like 30, 40 minutes of the game needs to be needs to be made. So. Mm. Yeah, are you able to? You can't play it through it from beginning to end yet, right? That you'll be able to do that, I guess, in a couple of months' time. Uh, yeah, hopefully in a month's time. But yeah, you can play through like from the beginning to where like the content finishes. But yeah. okay. Yeah, like the final sort of level is actually a big palace kind of thing that's that's inspired by like city palace in Jaipur and stuff. Huh. So, like, that's I, that's I, a big I, level, like. I, mean, oh, okay. I think the overall oh. level area is like, like uh, I think let me just uh, get an estimate or something. It's it's about yeah, I think it's about like it's like a 4K resolution size uh, like level map basically. So you're saying four times the size of Skyrim? No, no, not 4K <laughs> resolution. Yeah. I know. You know, like with that is like. I don't even remember the resolution, but yeah, like I just remember what my artist told me. So. Cool, sounds good, man. Uh, I, I mean, uh, are you guys developing in sequence? So uh, you're starting from the beginning and then building your, building it all yeah, the way to the end. Or in sequence, like what we did was we started with the major. We started at roughly chapter two of the game, and then we. Okay. So now the the ending part is left, and the intro part is left. Cool. So the middle is built out. Yeah, the middle part is finished. Finally. 
this is also cool. polishing and stuff going on because like you can like that stuff never really gets over yeah so it keeps on going so i mean mm-hmm. yeah i think i told you this before like i basically had a headache for 3 days running that's <laughs> how overwhelmed we are <laughs> yeah that sucks uh what is uh, i implemented a flashlight yesterday and i spent the last 3 days trying to i think you know this but whatever for the two people that listen to this out there i spent the last 3 days trying to implement parkour in my game and then i gave up and implemented a flashlight instead so no parkour but you're getting a flashlight <laughs> so you can see in the darks so that's good we are like at this point i think you uh, like We need a website or something because I still have absolutely no idea what the game is about. I need I mean, a blog. There are people who are developing like, for sure. Yeah, I mean there are like games which who have like five teaser screenshots or something, and they have their own website full of videos and stuff like that. How do they have videos if they have only five teaser images? Yeah, I didn't completely think that through, but you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you also play the the? the chaos reborn prototype that was weird like the one julian bolot is making you know the guy who made xcom the original one <laughs> like that that like i i played that first match in that prototype was uh, so you start off on with just one hp guy apparently because uh, but yeah you start, like me and my opponent spent five useless turns moving around and trying to summon fantastic creatures So I tried to summon a unicorn. That guy tried to summon a minotaur, and all of those spells failed. Then I just clicked on like Tars Fireball button, and that hit the guy, and then I won in one hit. So I'm not sure, sure if that was supposed to be like the ideal outcome or something. But yeah, my time with the the prototype was weird. It was a really unexpected things. Anyway, that I think we should call it. Is that it? Yeah, let's call it. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it for this week, guys. We will see you next week. Uh, Tejas will be back. Uh, yeah. This is Vivek signing and uh, Arvind signing out. Bye, guys.